British newspapers repeatedly ran stories of anti-Semitism in the Labour Party. One of the next targets was Malia Bouatia, the newly elected leader of Britain's National Union of Students. Birmingham and Zionist outposts because it has a large Jewish society. So it's very bad. <laughs> Birmingham is in like NUS and student politics in the UK, like anti-Israel rhetoric is pretty bad. You know, like Zionism is an awful thing. Like you would call yourself a Zionist, you would go lift apart. You know, they say they're anti-racist, they say they don't discriminate people, but their anti-Zionism goes so far, I, I would say it becomes anti-Semitism. With each year of Israel's expanding occupation, support for BDS has spread on college campuses around the world. In Britain, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict defined the 2016 election for the NUS presidency. But Israel, where it exists now, is that problematic to you? Israel, as it behaves, uh, uh, is problematic to me. You would feel it would be OK for you to say about yourself that you were anti-Zionist? Yes, I would. Be bad here, yeah, 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 yeah. So she's really bad, but do you know Robbie Young? Have you heard of Robbie Young? Mali is NUS president, and Robbie is one of the vice presidents. He's a Labour student, and he's like really good in Israel. Like he's been out on a trip, so he's seen Israel, he's seen it first hand. He's really pro Israel. So there are some people in NUS which you know, are quite balanced and good. Another vice president, Richard Brooks, took the unusual step of publicly claiming that Buatia's criticisms of Israel amount to anti-Semitism. Like we've never had an elected leader um, racist. Uh, and U.S.'s uh, internal structures don't usually allow a vice president to go and publicly criticize your president um, on national radio, but you've got to do what you've got to do. When you look at what Malia Buati has been saying, she says it's her criticisms are a political one. She talks about Zionism, not about uh, people who are Jewish. Yeah, I think the really important thing here and something that the student movement needs to face up to is that it is for Jewish students to define what anti-Semitism is. And in the run-up to a national conference, nearly 50 Union of Jewish Student Presidents of Societies made it clear that they had concerns about some of the rhetoric. Brooks never mentioned that weeks before that interview, he'd been taken to Israel as part of a delegation from the Union of Jewish Students. I got educated on the stuff, like I spoke to people in UJS. I uh, got taken on a trip to uh, Israel with uh, UJS about two months ago. I was learning loads from that. And then from there on in, felt confident enough to start talking about some of the stuff more seriously. Yeah. We were campaigning for a person running against her, obviously. Um, we didn't want her to win. Um, but yeah, obviously it didn't work. <laughs> During the run-up to the election, Richard Brooks had held private meetings with Russell Langer, the campaign director of the Union of Jewish Students. Also attending the meetings was Michael Rubin. When he was chair of Labour students last year, I worked with it, so it was me, him, and Russell from UJS. We'd have our <laughs> have little secret breakfast meetings where we'd plan how to get moderate people, good politics, and a number of things uh, elected to certain places or whatever. So me and him worked quite closely together last year. After being introduced by the Israeli embassy as a young LFI volunteer, our undercover reporter explores the possibility of ousting the pro-Palestinian and U.S. president with the help of Richard Brooks. So how can we get in touch with the people who are trying to oppose her? You speak to me, because I'm helping organize them. <laughs> yeah? So, so, okay, cool. So just drop me a line whenever yeah. you want to have a conversation, or if you want to speak to someone in a certain geographical area, I'll point you to the right people. Our investigation also revealed that the Union of Jewish Students, who sent critics of Mali Buatia on trips to Israel, has received money from the Israeli embassy. In 2016, Shapira launched an unsuccessful bid for the presidency of the Union of Jewish Students.
He also received donations from Israel to set up a new campus-based think tank. He established the Pinsker Center with former university college student Elliot Miller. I spent a year working in the government of Israel. I was doing a fellowship in the foreign ministry, the congressional affairs department, so all the problems that they have and stuff. The guy behind me is in Israel. I'm going to find a guy who walk into a room with a donor and the donor will give them a check for 2.5k. It's just like that. He's a genius. They also confirmed for the first time that the powerful American pro-Israel lobby, APAC, is channeling money to British campuses through the Pinsker Center. I think APAC gave some money. We went to APAC in March and we got involved with APAC London. Elliot Miller remains vocal in the cauldron of London student politics. In episode two, further evidence of Israel's involvement in Britain's Labour Party. We work really closely together. But like a lot of it's behind the scenes. And the money Israel gives Labour MPs to help improve its image. It's more than one million pounds. It's a lot of money.